Aloha. I am Cosmic Love. And I am guided today to share the writings of a man named John Kimmy, a man who was adopted by the Hopi and asked to carry the Hopi cloth with the Hopi prophecy on it and go with the Hopi people, the Hopi elders, to the United Nations. In June of 2010, he wrote an update on the prophecy, which is as relevant now as when it was written. I am sitting on the branch of a beautiful willow tree in the sun along the coastline of what some call California. The tree is filled with all kinds of birds to serenade us as we read this incredible piece of the prophecy now. John Kimmy talks about the Hopi prophecy, June 11, 2010. According to the Hopi prophecy, we are in the latter days of the time of purification. We are in the process of resolution of polarities we have caused through our limited comprehension of universal principles. The ancient prophecy of the Hopis provides us with a number of specific significant future events and their corresponding instructions. These instructions serve as a guide to our responses to these events. The time of the purification began with the release of the first nuclear explosion in 1945. The event known in the prophecy as the Third Great Shaking is our present point with which our attention must be focused. There are two eventualities to be considered. The first phase, it states, could be the best case scenario and could conclude this cycle known as the fourth world in harmony with the intention of great spirit, the universe. It is said that at this time, the polarities will be so extreme that it will appear that all things will seem to be the opposite to the true path of life. I was told that good would be called bad, right would be considered wrong, that wealth would become poverty, and that men and women would tend to choose living apart. We are obviously in that predicament now. The instructions accompanying this condition are very clear. We are to identify the polarities in our personal lives and to begin to mitigate all of our issues, those both contrived and inherited with deep intention, practice, and patience. On the universal scale, the polarities will become obvious as the physical world responds to this imbalance with severe disturb disturbance of the natural cycles that have always maintained a solid state within nature. What we have recently termed earth changes will involve all four elements. Today we are suffering massive fires, especially in drought areas. The winds will intensify and become unpredictable. Floods will occur in areas where they are not typical. Earthquakes will become more frequent and increase in intensity. And the very polarity of the geomagnetic field and the resonant frequency fields of the Earth will create global changes. Presently, the drift of the location of the North and South Poles is moving significantly faster than has ever previously been monitored. Politically, human behavior by its very nature is demanding change. The old order principles by which we govern and are governed must be changed. 
our economics are based upon exploitation ever since the Industrial Re Revolution. As our resources dwindle and the populations increase, such antiquated principles as profit, private property, possessiveness, and competition must be replaced with their opposites. The prophecy urges us to gather ourselves and be good to each other. They warn that the time of the lone wolf is over. Our common problems have foreshadowed our common differences. We can only survive if we cooperate on achieving common goals. On a spiritual, cultural level, we must abandon all belief systems that maintain exclusivity. Religious chauvinism is the present excuse for waging war. Ideologies such as democracy, oligarchy, pragmatism, socialism, etc. all reflect the antiquated forms devised to uphold the old principles of the fourth world. Sectarian principles of governance and religious dogma must be replaced with a global holistic approach to the preservation of the environment. The greatest spiritual polarity, the ultimate challenge, is reflected in the vast differences in the Eastern theology and that of the West. The Western traditions foster mandates on behavior, i.e. the Ten Commandments. A higher authority outside of us demands the nature of our thoughts and actions. Deviation is considered a sin and generates condemnation. It also implies that we are all by our very nature deviants, therefore condemned. Only the most righteous will earn a place in heaven. The belief systems generated from this theology only require meeting the present circumstances and are seldom influenced by projected long-term consequences. The Eastern traditions reflect a very different, direct, opposite point of view. The authority is not a conscious entity apart from us. It is an integral aspect of human nature known as mind. The purpose of life is to develop minds so that it will lead us out of the collectively generated illusion known as Maya and enter the expanded state of mind known as enlightenment. Since everyone has the same opportunity and ability to reach this highest state of universal wisdom and compassion, they are generated and re-established with every successive generation. Resolution of this polarity is the most challenging and necessary function of our evolutionary destiny. We must become one family, not next door neighbors. According to the prophecy, the third great shaking creates the opportunity for such resolution. It states that the people of the red symbol with red hats and cloaks will come first out of the east, small in number, bringing wisdom and knowledge to this land, the west. We are urged to accept these teachings and to integrate them into our present lifestyle, making the necessary adjustments to regain resolution. From the early 60s to the present, we have seen the teachers arrive from the East bringing their teachings to the West with great intention and vision. Many of us have adopted these teachings and are now practicing in our unique Western fashions. 
Some have attained the enlightened state and are among the present generation of teachers and gurus. The teachings of indigenous people are included as Eastern in this regard. We Americans have become challenged by these Native American teachers to take the teachings to heart and to indigenize our way of life. Many seekers have responded, have become initiated onto the red road and quietly go about their new lifestyle cautiously apart from the mainstream. I am one of those. Grandfather David, my Hopi teacher, told me of this crucial time in these words. One day you will wake up and it will be too late to make your changes. I immediately perceive that we have all the time in the world and not a moment more. I refer to this fourth world, a cycle with its own agenda in time and space. After that moment, we will lose our power over the outcome. We will become merely victims of that outcome, our survival contingent upon the quality of our hearts. In Eastern terms, we will become fused to our karma. This marks the last moment of divine grace, our communion with source. According to the prophecy at this irreversible moment, the force of the red symbol will assume another form with an opposite objective. We can anticipate that the red hat people will come out of the West. They will come large in number. They will fall out of the sky like rain and overtake the land in one day. They will have no mercy for anyone and will enforce a way of life on us that we would never choose for ourselves. When this message was finally delivered 15 years ago to the Secretary General of the United Nations and 16 delegates, they speculated that it might be the Chinese. The elders at that point were dutifully retaining their options. They were warned not to speculate, but to concentrate upon the instruction of preparation and compassion. This occurrence will trigger the most crucial event in the prophecy. It is where an ancient relative returns to the Hopi Mesas, carrying a stone tablet that will complete the migrations and seal the cycle known as the fourth world. He is known as the, to the Hopi as the Pahana, the purifier. His ancestor was light complexion, so he is also known as the great white brother. It is his function to purify the world of all the wicked people. When I first heard this, I immediately referred to the second coming of Christ, then to the Maitreya Buddha, then Nostradamus, and on into many end time mythologies. It is the judgment day taken literally, as the prophecy calls it, the day of purification. It is said that the only survivors will be the one-hearted, those paltry few who have hearts pure enough to qualify as seeds for the fifth world. Even if there is only one pair of one-hearted, maybe a brother and a sister, great spirit's promise of a human presence in the fifth world will be kept, and Masau, the great spirit of the universe, the fourth world, will meet them and usher them into the fifth world. Our spiritual connection with our Mother Earth and a sense of common destiny with her will be challenged. Each person will have to deal with that reality. Each will be tested. The prophecy instructions explain that our relationship with our Earth is fundamental to our being. We must embrace her spirit and take our instructions from her.
we must embrace her spirit and take our instructions from her. Those that choose the other path will discover that they have been deceived. They will become the playthings of a heartless race. And yes, their lifespans will be extended so they have longer to suffer. The consequence of choosing to remain with our mother will be an ever-growing connection with all biological life forms. We will become true Terrans. Our newly awakened sense of oneness will evolve our deeper communication abilities and endow our relationships with ever more satisfying results. As the Hopi elders said, we are the ones we have been waiting for. In conclusion, we are now being humbled to see that our technology and our culture of science have led us into a belief that this sacrosanct culture possesses empirical knowledge of the world and its systems. Yet upon reflection, we know that the generation of this knowledge was assembled by many generations of individuals who pursued the truth with little or no accountability to the perceptions of our pre-scientific ancestor cultures. This realization now could save us. The only stewards of this earth with a track record of sustainability and harmony for thousands of years are these very ancestor cultures. The Hopis warn that annihilation of the remnants of those cultures will definitely eliminate human participation in the fifth world. If this radical divergence from our comfortable relationship with our culture of science seems outrageous, just note the statement given by Dr. Mikiel Kaku, quantum physicist, some years ago. He stated that the foremost physicists are now consulting every 30 days in order to consider all the new discoveries and conduct a complete revision of science. This crisis is demanding that we employ a previously overlooked faculty of human nature, namely our divinity. This faculty has always been active, but almost completely ignored in this last century. It is through the filter of our hearts and emotions that we can reawaken this reliable source of truth. This is a personal process and not an institutional one. The reason that religions have so much influence over our psyches is that we have sold our hearts and our personal communion with great spirit to what the Hopis call the high priests of the two hearted. Those would be the institutions of science in religion. Grandfather explained to me when Creator created the world, he gave each life form a way to be in harmony with all other forms. When humans were created, we too were given a way. That way is known as the true path of life. By returning to the adherence to natural law, we will return to that path, our birthright. Astonishingly, not only the Maya singled out the 2012 date now looming so close, similar last day prophecies are found from the Hopi, Navajo, Cherokee, Apache, ancient Egyptians, Kabbalists, Essenes, Kiro elders of Peru, Sub-Saharan Dogon tribe, and the Australian Aborigines. In conclusion of reading this piece, I invite all listening to go to Patricia Cota Robles' blog, 146, where she brings through a decree to open us back to the elemental vortices within our bodies and our beings, restoring our connection to our body diva which has the capacity to tune in to our perfect harmonious alignment with nature. 
and this earth itself. The consciousness of the planetary logos is rising within us and it is required that we collapse the polarities of dualistic ego inside of us that we hold the field at center in stillness, oneness, in love, the one-hearted, pure source, cosmic love. Aho Matakwiasin. Aho.